Welcome to Informatica Cloud Videos. Today in this video we will be looking at how to use sequence generator transformation in Informatica Cloud Mapping Designer. Let's start with the functionality of sequence generator transformation. It is used to generate sequence of numerical value. Usually this numerical value is represented in big int data type in Informatica Cloud Transformations. There are two attributes or fields which is very important and is being taken out of sequence generator transformation down the stream. These are called as current value and next value. Current value is represented by CURRVAL. There are a few properties of sequence generator transformation wherein you can set these properties to generate cyclic sequence or you can generate a new sequence from the initial value for every run or else you can also have a configuration wherein you can specify the increment value of the sequence. You can as well have cached value for the sequence where you have multiple partitioning for a given data integration task. There are modes in which user can reset the current value if you have a sequence generator transformation used in a mapping again for which a mapping configuration task is created. Let's look at a demo on how to use sequence generator transformation. Browse the Informatica Cloud portal URL and log in using your credential. Now go to design mapping and click on new mapping in order to create a new mapping. Let me create a name for the mapping over here. We'll be having a source and we'll try to use flat file as source in this case. Let's try to configure the source connection. Let's select the object for the flat file. I'm using gcs underscore list dot csv as a source file. Let's have an expression transformation after this. Let's try to drag and drop a target where we'll be writing the value down. Let's choose a flat file connection. I'm going to create a new flat file object in this case. Now I'm going to drag and drop a sequence generator transformation. When you go to the sequence properties, you'd see quite a few properties here where you, you can see the start value, increment by initial value, and number of cached value. There are some properties like cycle and reset as well. Usually, the next value always starts with the initial value and is incremented by the increment value. The current value is always one more than the next value. If you are to select the property cycle, then whenever the given sequence reaches its end value, then the sequence again restarts from initial value. If you are to select reset, for every run, the sequence starts from the initial value. You can choose your own end value as well, but the default end value is the maximum allowed end value given. In the same way, for increment also you can have a different increment by value, but the maximum allowed value is given in the tooltip over here at the bottom. You can also set number of cached values if your particular mapping is configured for partitioning. The number specified here would be used for 
the number of the sequence which needs to be cached at a given moment of time. Now let's go ahead and link the output of the sequence to the expression transformation input. One of the fundamental or basic rule of a sequence generator transformation is it doesn't have any upstream and in the downstream to whatever transformation it is going to be linked should already be linked to an upstream transformation. Now let's click on the expression and have a look at what are the fields that the sequence generator transformation has generated. It has generated two fields current value and next value after that I begin. Let's go ahead and validate this mapping. Now let's try to create a mapping configuration task out of it. Let's choose a runtime environment. As you could see, by default, the current and the initial values are being set. As you could see, this particular task ran and 136 successful rows were generated. Now let's click on this particular activity log to see what are the current and the next values being cached or being stored as part of the metadata after first run. As you could see 136 is the value and the sequence generator by itself has stored the next value for this particular mapping configuration task. Now when we rerun this, this value is going to get doubled. After the second run, when I click on the activity log mapping configuration task, you would see the next value has got doubled and now the value is 273. Users can also click on the mapping configuration task, edit it, go to the sequence and manually configure the sequence by clicking on the pencil button or the edit button. If you are not using a mapping configuration task and trying to run the mapping directly, then the current value are not cached and would be starting from the initial value for each and every run. With this, we cover how to use sequence generator transformation in Informatica Cloud Mapping Designer. Thanks for watching the video. We would like to hear from you. You can post your comment to support videos at informatica.com or tweet us at twitter.com info support.